In this video, I'm going to show you how to clean up the system data, which is also known as the other data on your iPhone device. So basically, this depends on your iPhone device. If you have an older iPhone model, for example, this is an iPhone 6, you'll see this category labeled as other. But if you've got a more recent iPhone, for example, this is an iPhone 12, you'll be able to see this label as system data. And this is basically a category that keeps on eating up a lot of space on our iPhone device. This category can occupy up to 10, 20, or even 30 gigabytes of your storage on your iPhone device. In my case, for example, if I scroll down, as you guys can see in here, we've got system data eating up over 16 gigabytes here on my iPhone device, which is a lot of storage being taken up by iPhone itself. And this is data that I'm not even using. So getting rid of this system data and cleaning up your phone does make a lot of difference. And in this video, I'll be showing you how to do this. And all you need to do is just stick to the video till the end. Hey, my name is Shaq and in this channel I help you fixing tech related issues. So if you're into tech content, consider subscribing to the channel. So in this video, I'll show you how to clean the system data, which is also known as other data on your iPhone device. So before we even get started, I would like to explain to you guys what exactly is other system data, what information is being stored in our iPhone in the category of other system data. This is basically cache log files as well as temporary files that the iPhone system itself stores in your iPhone while performing different tasks on your iPhone device. And this category is basically a combination of temporary files from different applications. That's why the process of cleaning the storage is a little bit tricky, but it'll help you going through this in today's video. A good example of the system data here on your iPhone device is when you watch a Netflix movie on your iPhone, for example. So what the application is gonna do is it's gonna buffer the movie, which is basically download and temporarily store one minute or two minutes forward of the movie so that you have a much pleasing experience while watching a movie on Netflix so that the movie doesn't keep on stopping in between. So what it does is it downloads, for example, three minutes ahead of the particular minute that you're actually watching and then it stores temporarily on your device so that once you get there, you already have the file downloaded. So it keeps on downloading, downloading ahead, ahead, ahead so that you do not face interruptions while watching a movie on Netflix, for example. And that is applied to a lot more applications here on our iPhone device. These are files that are supposed to be deleted as soon as you're done with a particular task in an application. But unfortunately, Apple systems are not good enough at deleting temporary files. Most of the times they miss it and they keep those files stored in our device and that keeps on eating a lot of space. So here Here's a feedback to Apple, please, I hope you guys fix this as soon as possible so that we stop having this issue in our iPhone devices. So the first thing I want you guys to do is basically hop into settings in your iPhone, scroll down all the way to Safari, okay, tap once on Safari, scroll down, and then tap here on clear history and website data. So basically one of the most famous applications that eats up a ton of space in the systems data category on our iPhone is the Safari browser. Okay, so you wanna tap here on clear history and website data, tap here on clear history and data, tap on close tabs as well to make sure that Safari's temporary files are actually deleted, okay? So once you're done deleting Safari's temporary files, you wanna make sure that you hop into messages as well here, okay? This is another inbuilt application that in my opinion is not well optimized and it keeps on eating a lot of space on our iPhone device. So you wanna scroll down all the way to keep messages in here. We've got here an option which says message history, keep messages. You wanna tap once in that option. And then over here, you have three options, which is the first one, 30 days, the second one, one year, and then forever. So basically, if you have an old iPhone device that you've been using for five years, 
all those messages that, that you had received in the past five years are still stored in your device by default. So you wanna make sure you change this to one year at least, and then tap here on delete, okay? I'm pretty sure you won't need messages that have been sent to you years and years back, okay? You've already saw those messages and you can actually change this to one year so that your iPhone automatically deletes all the messages that have been sent to you one year before. Now, after performing these two steps, we're going all the way to general, okay? And then we're gonna scroll down and tap here on iPhone storage, okay? Because this is where we were. And over here, you can have a detailed representation of what's actually eating up a lot of space on your iPhone device, okay? So over here, we've got a lot of applications and each of these applications do have a portion of the storage being occupied by the other or system data. Going back all the way down, if you notice, we've cleaned up some space here from the system data. At the beginning of the video, system data was actually occupying more space than at the moment. This means that cleaning your messages and your Safari browser, it's gonna help you reduce your space. So if you're not satisfied with the space reduced, we're going to move forward. So now the next thing we need to do in here is basically focus in the applications that eat up the most of the storage. Since they eat up the most of the storage, obviously their temporary files are also occupying a ton of space here in our iPhone device. So what I would recommend you guys to do is to offload the apps that eat up a lot of space on your iPhone device and then reinstall those applications. What does offload actually mean? When you offload an application, you're not actually uninstalling the application, but you're temporarily removing the files of the application from your phone so that you can have more space and then once you want to use that application, you simply need to be connected to the internet and once you tap on the application, the application will be automatically loaded from the internet. And once you do that, all those temporarily cached files are going to be deleted. Okay, so that's the advantage of doing this. For example, I've got here Facebook. Let me quickly tap on offload application. Okay, let me confirm offload app. And here we go, the application is now offloaded. And you can also see here a cloud logo in here. So let me go back to my home screen. And as you guys can see here, there's a difference between the Facebook app, for example, and the Instagram app. As you can see, we've got here a logo which says that the application is actually in our device, but it's not 100% downloaded. It's offloaded, it's on the web, okay? Do not worry because this doesn't delete any private information or any details or data that you had on your iPhone device, okay? So simply tap on the application, which is Facebook, and it's gonna quickly download the application as soon as you wanna use that application, and all your data is still going to be present in your iPhone device. So you wanna do this to three or four or five applications here on your iPhone, but make sure that you focus on the applications that eat up the most space on your iPhone device. Because like this, you'll be able to free up a ton of space on your iPhone device. Now, if all the steps that we've performed do not satisfy you in terms of storage, we're going to reset our iPhone device. But do not worry because you'll be able to back up all your private information and all your data here, and then you'll be able to restore it later on. All you need is just internet connection. So first of all, go back all the way to settings, okay, scroll up, tap here on your name, and then tap here on iCloud, and then tap here on show all. As you can see here, we've got all the applications that we've got on our iPhone device, and you wanna make sure that you turn on all those applications to store them in iCloud on our device. So you'll be able to restore all your data after resetting your iPhone device. But over here, there's a small catch. As you guys know, iCloud only provides us five gigabytes of free storage for us to store our files online. And if you wanna have more storage, you need to actually upgrade to iCloud Plus and pay like $1, $2, or up to $10 to have more gigabytes of storage in your iCloud account. So basically, depending on your files, if you exceed five gigabytes, in my case, I've only occupied four gigabytes, but if you exceed five, you'll have to pay for this, 
or I'll show you a second way of how to actually back up your files for free. So basically on iPhone devices, most of the storage is basically occupied by photos. So one thing you can do is actually tap here on show all and then turn off photos, okay, by turning off all these options so you won't be having photos being backed up into your iCloud. This is going to reduce a lot of space from your iCloud storage so that you can focus these five gigabytes in only important files, applications such as these ones right here. And now in order to back up your photos for free, you can hop into the app store and then search for Google Photos. Okay search for google photos and here we go we've got google photos which is an application that allows us to store our files for free and it provides us a lot more storage for free here with google photos so all you need to do is just tap here on get to download and install google photos into your device simply log in with a gmail account and then you'll be able to back up all your photos into google photos and then you can later on after resetting your phone download those photos and then store them back into your iphone device so basically all other applications are going to be stored here in iCloud itself. Now, once you're done backing up all your data to iCloud, what you need to do is basically tap here on general, scroll down all the way to transfer or reset iPhone. You wanna tap on transfer or reset iPhone and then this screen is gonna pop up in here. So you wanna tap here on erase all content and settings, okay? Next up, it's gonna ask you to confirm by tapping here on continue, simply tap on continue, and then it's gonna ask you to type in the passcode for the iPhone in order to reset your iPhone. Simply type in the passcode and then your iPhone is gonna reset and it's gonna be brought as brand new device. Now, if you've got an older iPhone device, for example, such as an iPhone 6, 5, 7, simply tap here on settings. The process is a little bit different, but it's similar. Next tap here on general, scroll down and then tap here on reset. Okay. And then you'll be able to see an option which says erase all content and settings. Simply tap here on erase all content and settings. It's going to ask you whether you want to back up your files before erasing. Simply tap on erase now because we've already backed up it to iCloud. So simply tap here on erase now and then you need to type in your passcode. Let me quickly type in my passcode okay and then tap on erase iphone and then erase iphone again just for confirmation purposes and then it's going to ask you to type in the apple id password which is linked to your iphone device simply type in the password and then the reset process is going to immediately start here on your iphone device as you guys can see in here we've got a progress bar in here and it's taking place Right now, it takes you around 5 to 10 minutes max. You just need to be a little bit patient while the iPhone does its thing. So once the restore or reset process is complete, you'll be able to see here a hello screen on your iPhone device. And all you need to do is tap here on the home button and then tap on English, select the country where you're actually located. In my case, I'll be selecting United States, okay? And then simply tap on setup manually and follow the entire process. You need to log in into a Wi-Fi connection and then it's going to ask you for a few minutes to activate your iPhone device. Just wait up for a couple minutes while the iPhone does its thing. Next up, let's just tap on continue, um, set up touch ID later. Okay. Don't use touch ID at the moment. I don't want to set it up. Let me quickly create a password in here. Okay. And then here we go, we've got the most important part in here, which asks whether we wanna restore our files from iCloud backup. So you wanna make sure that you select restore from iCloud backup. And then all you need to do is simply log in with your iCloud details in here, your email, your password, sign in, and then you'll be able to restore all your information that you've backed up to your iCloud and be able to use your iPhone normally without the system data or other data on your iPhone device. Do not forget to download Google Photos and then install it as well if you've backed up your photos to Google Photos instead of iCloud Photos. So this was it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching the video. Do not forget to leave a comment down below, like the video, and subscribe.
subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.